Hi, I'm Mauro, and today we're going to learn about the science of weather. That's called meteorology, and people who study it are called meteorologists. And today we're going to create actually a tool that can measure the atmospheric pressure. The tool that is used to measure the atmospheric pressure is called a barometer. Meteorologists use these type of tools to predict the weather. Low pressure means stormy weather and high pressure usually means clear skies and sunny weather. We need a, 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 a jar, a ruler, a scissors, a pencil, a balloon, a rubber band. So the first step is we're going to cut the balloon's end, like not like not in the middle, just like to the end. And cut the neck of the balloon so it'll look like this. Next, put it over the jar. It's a bit tricky, so if you can't do it, you can ask an adult or a parent to help. Stretch it so that it does not have any bumps at the top, and then tie it with the rubber band. Now I secured the balloon with the rubber band. See, it's tightly secured. And we also need a hot glue gun and some pieces of wood. So you're going to make a stand for barometer with some hot glue. So first we're going to glue it on and we, we have... Quick because hot glue dries quickly. Next, we're going to use this piece. So, but proceed. So we glued the triangle on. We're going to glue, put some glue on this side of the triangle. And next, put the wood piece over here. Okay, we made our stand. Now we're gonna glue the jar to the wood. So I'm super excited. I'm almost finished with the bare meter. A couple more steps. First, we're gonna put some tape on this jaw and cut it so it looks like a pointer so we can see exactly um if the pressure is low or high. There. There's this straw. It looks like a pointer. Now we're going to stick it on the jar. And now, only one more step. We need to label and mark all these places on the cardboard. I'm going to use the ruler and mark it half inches in the middle. A mark here. A mark here. Thank you. Just gonna put some on the bottom too. This is our finished barometer. It's easy to carry around. And right now, I mean, the straw's in the middle. And we can see how it works by taking this barometer onto your deck or even outside. So we're at my deck in a sunny area. And the blue line is, a, is the normal line, and we'll wait for some time and see what happens. It's pressure, and it seems like it's going to rain, and you can look up at the rain cloud. So there's really cloudy skies, and the barometer's straw is pointing up, because yesterday was a sunny day. And let's put it out for some time 
and see what happens. So I waited some time, and after it rained, you can see the balloon is inflated, and the straw is pointing down now. So I left it inside for some time, and the rain has stopped now. And as you can see, earlier the straw was pointed downward, and the balloon was inflated, but now the balloon is flat, and, and the straw is at the blue line. Here is wherever you go, it's small, light, and easy to carry. And now we're going to discuss a bit about the science. So high pressure means dry weathers and sunny skies. And, and when it's high pressure, the air molecules outside the jar are very densely packed. This makes the balloon, in, I mean, this makes the middle of the balloon push down a bit so the straw points upwards. When it's low pressure, it's usually rain and clouds, and the, and the air molecules outside the jar are spaced far apart. The air molecules inside the jar can move freely, and they push up on the rubber, and the straw moves down. The real world science behind this is called isobars. Isobars are squiggly lines on maps that help scientists determine the atmospheric pressure. The higher the number is on an isobar, the more sun there is. The lower the number is, the more chance of a storm there is. Have a fever or cold or go to the doctor, that's where we use the thermometer. Today, we're going to discuss the two um, most common types of thermometers. A mercury thermometer and a, and a digital thermometer. A mercury thermometer has a mercury at the bottom of it. Just like it's not part of the planet mercury, just in case you're wondering. It's a liquid called mercury. And when... And when uh, body temperature goes into it, it expands. And the liquid goes down, I mean, goes up a narrow tube. That's how the mercury therm thermometer works. The digital thermometer uses advanced technology. And it is safer, more accurate, and faster. So that's why most people have a digital thermometer. We use this thermometer to check our temperature if we have fever or not. And now we're going to make our very own thermometer. The things we need for this is a felt tip pen, a straw, some food coloring, we're going to use red, a bottle filled to almost the top with water, some modeling clay, and a pipe tea. And some oil. The first step is to um pour. I mean, is to put some red food coloring into this bottle. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. If you just open. Yeah. Open this thing. Just. Into the straws. Yeah, you can do that. Now we have to add a drop of oil at the top, and don't worry about them getting the water and oil getting mixed. Oil is immiscible with water. Okay, which we we'll put here. And we have to put the drop of oil in so that the water doesn't evaporate. And the first few 
times I tried it, I didn't get the expected result, and I found out that's because the seal's not airtight, and it, and like the water was leaking. So I replaced my old straw um, with a new straw, and it worked better. Now you might be wondering, what's the explanation for all this? Well, when the water got hot, the water molecules moved around very quickly, causing the water to go up. But when the water got cold, the water molecules moved slowly, which caused the water to drop down. This is an extra step to take it further. Because the thermometer we've made only shows if the temperature is hot or cold. It doesn't show accurate readings. So using this, you can mark the temperature and you can make a scale to see um, how, like what temperature it is each day. And you can write it down somewhere to keep track of the temperature. rainfall meteorologists use an instrument called a rain gauge and they find patterns in the rainfall and predict when it's gonna rain next this is vital information for farmers and gardeners but in case you hadn't seen my video on meteorology you can watch that now this is the barometer I made in the other video. And today we're gonna build a rain gauge. So we need a bottle, some duct tape, um, a cutter thing, some balls, modeling clay, and a ruler. We got this bottle and this cutter. So first we're gonna cut the bottle. As you can see, it's almost to the bottle's neck. And if you can't really cut it, you can ask an adult for help. So I'm just gonna cut like this part of the bottle. Okay. So as you can see, I cut it the neck of the bottle, but the edges are a bit sharp. Uh, just in case there's anything sharp in there, we're gonna cover it with some duct tape. I've covered the sharp edges with duct tape. And now I'm gonna pour these balls in. We poured the gravel in because um, gravel can help it keep it steady. So if there's a strong wind, it won't blow away. And if your bottle has an uneven surface, it can help make the surface even. Next, we need some modeling clay. And I'm, I'm using purple, but you can use any color. And we're going to make uh, this Modeling clay like this, you can use any color. And next, we're going to put the disc down in the bottom. Okay, so I'm securing the clay into position. And now, to measure how much rain we had, we need a ruler. I'm going to tape a small ruler to the side, but if you have a bigger bottle, you can use a bigger ruler like this one. You can tell I'm using a double-sided tape. So I'm just gonna stick it for some length. Tape. I stick the tape to the ruler. Now I'm gonna stick it to the bottle. And make sure to do um, make sure to do it where the clay starts, because if you like stick the ruler under the clay where the gravel is. You won't really be able to measure it because water can't get um, near the gravel. So I'm just gonna stick it where the clay is. Like, we're almost done with our rain gauge. 
And now we only have one more step. If we didn't have a funnel, then all of the rainwater we collected would evaporate. So that's why we put the funnel on to, to stop the rainwater from really evaporating. So I'm super excited. And if you get a rainy day, you can test it out. It's really good. And you can actually be a rain measurer. <coughs> so yeah, this is a super cool experiment and you can do it with all the stuff you have at home. Uh, we filled with this rain gauge and I'm super excited to test it out. It's raining really heavily and I'm gonna put it here and measure how much rain there is today. And if you want to, you can keep a, you can keep a log and measure how much rain there is. So I'm gonna keep it here. So I'm gonna wait here for some time and measure how much rain there is. When rain falls, it soaks into the soil or goes down drains or falls into oceans and rivers and etc. When rain falls, if water didn't soak up into the ground or go away in drains or like flow into oceans or rivers or lakes or etc., it will pile up and the more water that fell, the more deeper it will get. That is the same principle we use in the rain gauge. We collect the water, um, we collect all the water that falls into this circular opening at the top, as you can see right here. And I've stuck a ruler over here to measure how much um, water fell into it. I left this rain gauge outside and I think it collected maybe 0.2 centimeters of water or 0.3. It didn't collect a lot of water, but if I had a rain gauge double the size, it would collect twice the amount of water, but the depth would still be the same. If I had a rain gauge the size of a soccer field, uh, you might collect hundreds of um, hundreds of gallons of water or even thousands of gallons of water but they would all um, but all the water I mean would have the same depth <laughs> Thank you.